So today let's talk about color. How do you handle color in artwork? Okay, so here I have uh, a group of uh, um, pastels. And if you look at pastels here um, as value, that is what I want you to do. I want you to see pastels as value. This pastel is lighter than this pastel, right? This pastel is lighter than this pastel. This pastel is lighter than this pastel in value. And one way you can do that is squint. Um, but what I did was I took this and I made this here. I made half of this black and white and the other half color. So you can see if you squint, this is the same value. Same here. If you squint, this is the same value as that gray. So when you're painting, you need to see the value of a color. And that will help you get um, light values, midtone values, and dark values as you're painting. Value is the most important thing in painting, um, and then color is secondary. So if, uh, let's see, I will go to this. Okay, so, so what you want to do is you want to be a look at shapes of an object. This is black and white, so you, you're really not looking at color. You're looking at value, just like what we're doing when we're dealing with charcoal. Okay, charcoal, you're always looking for value, and you're always looking for planes. So this right here, this plane is facing that way. This plane right here is facing this way. And so you want to think about as you're drawing it out in your painting, you want to think about which direction the plane is facing. If it's facing towards the light, it'll tend to have a lighter value. So if we break this down, um, when you're dealing with painting, um, it, it's uh, you're looking for your highlight, midtone, and shadow whenever you're dealing in a painting. But let's talk more about color. Color and hue means the same thing, okay? Here's a standard color wheel. You have um, your primary colors, yellow, red, blue, right? Your secondary colors, green, orange, purple. So you should be aware that uh, to make a secondary color, you can mix yellow and red to make orange. That's uh, first grade stuff. You should be able to understand that. Pretty simple. Okay, but now, if we look at color as value, okay, so this dark bluish purple is this value on a grayscale. Remember the dreaded 10 squares? Here it is, it's coming back. Um, but you're going to use it in color now. So you're, you're, you've learned how to use the value scale with black and white. Now you're going to use the value scale with color. So this yellow is like a number two in, in the value scale. This orange is what? A number one, two, three, four, five. So that's kind of a mid-tone. You know, and here's this blue, um, more of a number 10. So, think of color as value. Huge. But, you also need to think of color as intensity, or intensity, saturation, or chroma. Okay, all those mean the same thing. This, this whole thing means the same thing. So it's how intense the color is. The, over here, the intensity of this red is very strong, right? 
the intensity, but uh, then it grays goes to zero intensity, which is more just gray. So how can we use this in painting? Well, very often artists will take um, a complementary color. We'll talk about complements in a second. Artists will take complementary colors and mix into the really strong, intense chroma of a color to knock down the intensity so it's uh, not as intense. And uh, you'll, when you need to know that, we'll, we'll show you how to do that when we're at doing an actual painting. Okay, let's look at, oops, let's look at this. Okay, we talked about that. We talked, uh, yep. Okay, so color temperature. Uh, you also want to think of color as warm and cool temperatures okay that's it, it's important when you're dealing with shadows and highlights sometimes the shadow is a cool color which is pretty common but if you get light bouncing off a surface back onto an object very often the the reflected light will have a shadow that is warm that's really interesting. So if you look at all this paint that's been squeezed out, this paint goes from warm to cool colors. So warm colors, yellow, orange, red, purple. But purple can be warm and cool, which is interesting. You know, then you have your cooler colors, the blues, the greens, um, and things like that. Let's look at another slide here. Okay, here's another interesting concept that you should know when you're dealing with value. If you look at all these squares here, squint at them, stare at them real close, we can make that bigger. Let's make that bigger. So if I turn this, so if I look at these squares, uh, no, nope, cancel. Okay, there we go. The squares in the center, and you stare at them real close. Which one of these squares? Which one of these squares are darker? Which one of these squares are lighter? This is called simultaneous contrast, okay? The rule of simultaneous contrast is any two values next to each other change how you see both of these values, okay? So that's going to be real important when you're dealing with color, okay? You, uh, you've done a little bit of this when you're dealing with black and white, when you're dealing with your charcoal drawings, is that this color, this value, affects that value. Believe it or not, every one of these squares in the middle are exactly the same value. They're exactly the same. Um, they're, they're just being affected by the value around it. So these are all exactly the same. The outside square is changes slightly. Notice how a slight change from a light gray to a slightly darker gray changes how you see the square in the center. It uh, has something to do with how our eyes are built. Okay. Now if I go down here, and we do it with color, each one of these squares in the middle are exactly the same yellow. But when you have a color around it, it changes how you see that color in the middle. 
it shifts that color a little bit. So that's important. Um, so if you're working on an apple or something, the color around that apple is going to affect how you see the apple in the middle. So that's very important. Let's go to, okay, we're going to go to an example here. Not that one. Ah, here we go. Okay, back to the pepper. So this color around the pepper affects how you see this color. So having cooler grays or, or warmer grays around here affects how you see the red pepper. That's really an important concept to understand. So you can't paint this red paper isolated by itself unless you paint this area also. So another concept, as you're painting this pepper, how do you get the highlight midtone shadow? Okay, I'll tell you how you're going to do that. There's different ways of handling color, but this, this one works really well for most people. To get the shadow, you take the complementary color of that pepper. Okay, so the complementary color of that pepper is... Blue. Okay, I had to go run and get my. So if we look at this, the complementary color of that pepper is blue or bluish green. So you can mix bluish green to create the shadow color. Same thing with these tomatoes. Let's move this up here so you can see this. So these tomatoes here, um, see the blue that's been added on top of this? This is where simultaneous contrast comes in. So adding blue next to this orange causes the shadow to cool and darken. So they, what they did was they mixed blue with orange to create the shadow value. How do you create the highlight? You want to go back and you want to look at, okay, if I create a highlight color, I look for something warmer, uh, more of an analogous color. So if I look at, you know, I have this orange here. To lighten this orange, I can add a little bit of yellow. Whoops, here we go. To lighten the orange, I lighten this orange, I can add yellow. I don't want to add white. No, 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 no. Stay away from adding white and black or any neutral colors to your composition because that will flatten the color and it, it'll make it less pleasing. So what we're trying to do is we're making, trying to make vibrant, exciting colors. So I always want to mix a lighter color in to create the highlight. I also want to, you know, so we have the highlight and shadow, okay? So shadow, we're mixing the complementary color. The highlight, we're mixing what? A lighter col value color, not white. Same thing with the shadow, we're not adding black, okay? The mid-tone is usually what we call the local color. The local color is the color of the object you generally think of it being. Okay. So, color harmony. Here's another, uh, some more terms for you to learn. Okay, complementary color is the color opposite on the color wheel. Boom. Easy to figure it out. Okay. Use that when you're trying to create your shadows. 
Okay, here's a split complement. So you have the complement of blue, which it could be orange or yellow. Analogous colors. Okay, analogous colors are any colors next to each other on the color wheel. Okay, we talked about that. And there we go. So let's, okay, what would we do with this? If you look at this painting, how did they get the deep red? The local color is the color of the apple. Okay, so it's a red apple. To lighten it, they used a lighter color, which was orange. So this is where color is secondary to value. So you're trying to get these values. This whole shape here is a lighter value. Your eye's gonna automatically fill in. It's gonna say, oh, that's a red apple, okay? But what they're using is they're mixing yellow or orange into this red to create this lighter value, okay? The dark color on this side, the shadow, what are they mixing? They're mixing the complementary color. What's the complementary color of red? They're mixing green, okay? So they're taking a little bit of green, or you could use a little bit of blue, which would create a purple, but um, they're mixing green in this to, to lower the intensity of the color, to darken the color, and to uh, create that shadow value that you want. So this red is high intensity. This red is low intensity. Okay, so it's all about how intense the color is sometimes. So keep that in mind. So here we have the plate that this apple's sitting on. It's a green plate. So this is this right here is probably the local color. They added yellow to this green to create the highlight values. What did they do with the shadows? What would you add into that yellow? green to make the shadows. You'd add red or purple. So they add red or purple in here to lower the intensity of the color and to darken the color. Isn't that interesting? Okay. Notice the cast shadow. It's a purple. Why? Because uh, it doesn't have any reflected light coming into it. So light's coming down here, hitting the apple, hitting the plate, and the plate's casting a shadow. So this shadow generally will be cool in value if it doesn't have any reflected light bouncing back into it. So it's whatever the source light is, this cast shadow will tend to be cool. Okay. Now a lot of this stuff you don't need to know until you need to know and you probably will need to know in a little while because we're going to start doing some pastel painting of some of these still lifes. They're very simple still lifes but uh, dealing with color is a whole nother level of working you know, your artwork. And so uh, it, it's a little tricky at first, so we're going to keep it very simple, very easy still lifes, nothing hard to draw, and we're just going to deal with color. So I want to use color as value. Value is primary, most important, the actual color is secondary. 